I'm a patient of Dr. Goland. I've had type 1 diabetes for almost 40 years. Thanks for considering doing this. So, as we discussed, uh, we're going to do a tiny little skin biopsy. And, and Dr. Goland asked me to participate in this research project to uh, look into the benefits of doing stem cell research in the context of helping people with diabetes. When people on the street talk about stem cell research or they read about it in the New York Times, um, I think they usually think of this futuristic aspect of it, that we might be able to replace those cells which are lost in a disease and, and fix ourselves this way, to, to regenerate ourselves in this way. But I think another very important application will be to use those cells to try to figure out why we get sick and to discover drugs which will stop us from getting sick in the first place. I have lived 40 years with this disease and I'm a pretty healthy man. So again, I, I'm lucky. But um, it would be great if I could wake up tomorrow and someone could do something to me, I wouldn't have diabetes. Uh, but it'd be incredible if the millions of people with diabetes and the incredible impact on the country in terms of costs, personal impact, uh, could be affected. Embryonic stem cells are isolated from the very early human embryo. It's a stage of embryonic development which is just a few days after fertilization. There are about a hundred cells in this early embryo, and then inside there's a small cluster of cells called the inner cell mass, and from those cells, embryonic stem cells are derived. These embryonic stem cells are remarkable cells because they have the ability to both self-renew indefinitely in culture. That is, over a period of weeks, we could go from a single cell in a dish to an entire room full of cells. And those cells all would have the ability to give rise to any one of the different cell types in our body, be they a nerve cell, a liver cell, a pancreatic cell, a muscle cell. And so these cells are very powerful for scientists and will allow them, I think, to investigate basic developmental processes in our bodies as well as try to study disease. You will feel a pressure sensation, but it shouldn't hurt. Okay? Yep. The skin biopsy is a very simple office procedure that is done with a small tool. It's called a punch biopsy and it takes a three millimeter biopsy of the skin. It's either done in the upper arm or the upper leg. And then the cells are grown in culture and the DNA is extracted and used in this procedure called somatic cell nuclear transfer. Somatic cell nuclear transfer is the process of removing the genetic material from an oocyte, which is an unfertilized egg, or a very early embryo, and replacing it with the genes from an adult cell. First, you take the unfertilized egg. That egg is surrounded by a little shell. That shell is called the zona pellucida. And then a smaller glass pipette is used to drill through that shell and then to reach into the egg and remove the chromosomes. The second step is to take the chromosomes from an adult cell and transplant them back into the egg. Then after those chromosomes are introduced, the cell is allowed to divide into an embryo, and then from that you can derive embryonic stem cell lines. So the, the reason for doing somatic cell nuclear transplantation is that by removing the chromosomes from the egg and replacing them with these adult chromosomes, you can make an embryonic stem cell line which has all of the genes of that adult cell. 
if we could take a stem cell and give it the nuclear material, the DNA of a patient who has diabetes, and let that stem cell develop into an insulin-producing cell, we could study the development of that cell. We could study the processes that lead to the malfunction of that cell. We could understand how the beta cell works at such a fundamental level that we would actually be able to intervene using other kinds of approaches. So the primary promise of stem cells with regard to diabetes or any of these other diseases such as Parkinson's disease or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Alzheimer's disease is that we can create the cell type of interest that has the genetic mark on it, so to speak, of an individual who has the disease and watch that cell develop and we can see what the steps in development are that have gone awry in that individual. This will be an extraordinary uh, provide extraordinary insight that just simply is not available to us, even by studying patients who we know have the disease. I think stem cell research is a real revolution in medicine. Finally, for the first time, after a hundred years of studying developmental biology, we're able to use that information to try to develop cures.